Welcome back, scientists. It's Cynthia here. Welcome to chapter two, lesson three. In our last lesson, we investigated this question in the book, Seeing the World Through Numbers. Our investigation question says, is there a pattern to the weather that we can use to make predictions? In today's lesson, we'll continue to look for patterns at other locations all around the world and see whether it's possible to compare places and make predictions about future weather. Maybe you remember back in our book about finding the range for each line plot. I remember the May temperatures where the boy lives were similar and the May temperatures where his cousin lived were similar. Both places, though, had different ranges, so the weather was not the same. Remember, it was much cooler at his cousin's house in May. Let's see if that pattern continues. The Wildlife Protection Organization has reserves all over the world for different types of animals, including these three primates. The ring-tailed lemur at the top, the Japanese macaque in the middle, and the golden snub-nosed monkey at the bottom. Primates include apes, lemurs, macaques, and monkeys. Orangutans, chimpanzees, and gorillas are part of the ape group because they don't have tails, but other primates do have tails. There are reserves for each of these three species of primates because the forests where they live, their habitats, are being cut down. When an animal's habitat is lost, it can affect whether the animal survives, unless it can find a similar habitat. The WPO sent weather data for these three wildlife reserves. We'll look at line plots for January high temperatures in each place and compare the weather. Let's just review some of the features of a line plot. This one here is for Asalo National Park. This is where the ring-tailed lemurs live. Let's remind ourselves, what do the numbers on the axis mean? And that would be that long line across the bottom. What are all of those numbers? What do you think each X means? If you're not sure, let's look at what's, what features are there to help us. Notice the title at the very bottom underneath the numbers. That says temperature capital F, which means Fahrenheit. So that means the, t the axis tells us the temperature. Do you see the subtitle of the graph? January 2016, daily high temperatures. This can help you understand what each X shows. In this case, it shows every single day. One other important feature of the graph to notice is that the line plot begins at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. The axes on line plots do not often start at zero. So let's take a look at some of our data. First, we'll use this line plot to find the range of temperatures in Asalo National Park where the ring-tailed lemurs live. What do you notice about the highest number and the lowest number? Could you give us the range? Once you think you have the right range, I'll show you how to add it to a temperature scale so we can compare each place. Here is a temperature scale we could use. Isalo only falls between 76 and 84 on the scale. So I drew an orange circle there. Now we'll look at another reserve where the macaques live. This is Yakushima Island in Japan. Already, what do you notice about the range of temperatures for this primate? If you had to fill in the blanks, could you find the lowest number on the scale and the highest number? Hopefully you did. Now we'll add them to our temperature scale. Here is a new oval spanning the numbers between 43 and 72 on the scale. Already, what do you notice about Yakushima compared to Isalo? Here is our last set of data for a nature reserve in China. This is the home of the snub-nosed monkeys. If you look at the range for this primate, what do you notice? Let's make sure we add this range to our temperature scale. I'll add it here in green. Now, let's take
take a look at the temperature in all three places. I have some challenge questions for you. You can answer them out loud, you can tell them to a neighbor near you, you can tell them to a tree outside, or you can write them down in your notebook if you want to. If you look at these three places, which place is the warmest? Which place do you think is the coldest? Are the temperatures similar for each individual place? Meaning if you just look at a solo, are the temperatures about the same? Now keep all that in mind, we're gonna pause on temperature and look back at the precipitation for each place. Here is the precipitation data for all three places. The numbers are in bold, so you can see Asalo had 311 millimeters. The next is 111 millimeters, and the one at the bottom is only 15 millimeters. So which place has the most precipitation? How do meteorologists figure out the total precipitation for the month so that they can compare places? For meteorologists to figure out the total precipitation for the month, they add up the precipitation from every day and find the total. Why do you think that's useful? I bet meteorologists who are trying to find the rainiest island for an orangutan reserve would definitely find a monthly total very useful. So if we look at our scale, we can see from this January data that in different places around the world, there are many possible temperatures. However, the temperatures in any one location all fall within a range, and that range is not the same as, as in any other place. Each place has its own pattern of temperatures. We know that a pattern is something we observe to be similar over and over again. For example, we observe the temperatures in Isalo National Park for every day in January were about the same. Isalo National Park's January temperatures follow that pattern. Many kinds of scientists look for patterns. For example, a scientist studying volcanoes might look for a pattern of where most volcanoes are found around Earth. A scientist studying bird migration might look for patterns in when and where types of birds fly for winter. Your next video will explain the second part of our lesson where we will use an app to really show patterns. Stay tuned.